Welcome back. You're still watching this week, and I'm Somna Sambu. Now we head on to the issues of the elections holding across the country. Rural and by elections are holding in some national and state legislative seats in 26 states in Nigeria, and uh, the elections are still underway or being rounded off in some places. The elections are expected to hold in 80 local government areas across the country to fill vacancies created by the by the resignation, death, and removal of lawmakers through post-election litigation. According to INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, by-elections will hold in nine out of the 26 states to elect two senators, four members of the House of Representatives, and three members of state houses of assembly. Some notable vacant seats to be filled are those of Femi Bajabia Miller, Senator David Umahi, Senator Ibrahim Gedam, uh, Honorable Bumi Tunji Ojo and Honorable Tanko Sununu, who resigned to take up appointments as Chief of Staff to the President and Ministers in their various ministries. Then there is uh, Maihanchi, a member elect from Taraba who died before inauguration, and Abdul Kader Dambuga from Sokoto who died in October 2023. Well, our correspondents are on the field monitoring the elections. Uh, let's quickly join Emeka Monye now, who's uh, in a boy state, to give us a feedback on what's going on with the senatorial election there. Thank you so much, Emeka. Bring us up to speed on what's been happening uh, with uh, the elections there. Yeah, thank you very much, Samna. Uh, in summary, I did say it was a peaceful election, even though we had a series of complaints, allegations of vote buying, voter intimidation, um, voter harassment by various candidates, particularly the opposition candidates. You know, um, some of the wards and polling units that we visited, some of the candidates, um, the PDP candidates, the Labour candidates, they alleged that um, the main opposition part, the main party, the main political party had bought over the voters in favour in favor of themselves and they are complaining, they are alleging also to that the voters, most of the voters were intimidated from coming out to vote thereby disenfranchising them to have their particular followers, their supporters to come out to vote. You know, Ebony is very unique and you know, Ebony South is very unique considering the security challenges that is taking place in the southeast so a lot of people didn't find the election the by-election quite um, interesting to come and participate because most of the people that we spoke to on the street they were not too enthusiastic about coming out they were not so particular about who emerges um, as the winner because according to them they said it will still go the nigerian way that is to say those who they want to be there um, have already been known. So why bother themselves to come out um, to vote? Meanwhile, I have our correspondent who has been on the ground to give us um, his own personal assessment of the candidates and their strength and um, give us a deep analysis of all the major candidates in this election. Joining me live on Arise TV is a Boeing State correspondent, Ikele Ejike. Ikele, good, good evening good and welcome around. to Arise. Thank you so much. Now, you've been on ground, you are the correspondent here in a Boeing State. Yes. Now, in terms of their strengths and weaknesses, how would you assess these major candidates? Talking about um, the APC, the PDP, and um, perhaps Labour Party candidates. Okay, uh, in my own assessment, uh, I would say that the election uh, was free, but it wasn't fair because uh, there are some pockets of uh, vote buying in some areas that I visited. And uh, the Labour Party candidate has been a two time House of Rep member, he's on ground. And uh, the APC candidate, which is Professor Anthony, is, uh, uh, is, he was a lecturer before they brought him to contest for APC. So, in all the whole things, people know Linus more when it comes to political uh, uh, issues in that area. But because Professor Anthony, uh, Professor Anthony is contesting on the platform of APC with his state power and fund and all that, so they were able to popularize him. Then you now talk about the sensitization. Sensitization, INEC didn't do much 
but the, uh, 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 unless the political parties like the Labour, they went from pulling it to pulling it, and PDP and APC the same thing. But on that side of uh, on that side, INEC didn't didn't do much uh, sensitization. And uh, in area of uh, uh, voter apathy, in area of voter apathy, uh, you know. Ebony South is more vulnerable when it comes to this uh, security thank challenge. Thank you very much, um, H.E.K. Kelly, for sharing your thoughts on this outcome of today's election. Um, back to you, Sambu. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Moye. Uh, that's the much we can take at the moment. Uh, we'll now go on to other issues as we have at the moment. Uh, other correspondents are still ongoing. And of course, Arise News will be bringing you all the uh, updates in different states across the country where uh, this uh, uh, rerun or by elections are holding. We'll move on to our next story now. Two months after a court of appeal ruling removed him as a federal lawmaker representing Nadama North, Senator Elisha Abu has sent a strongly worded letter to President Bola Tinubu and the National Judicial Council, NJC, to stop the elevation of Supreme Court nominee. Uh, Justice Choma Wusu Iheme, the lead judge in the verdict that sacked him as senator, including that of his cousin brother, uh, Honorable Rufai Jingi, as a member of the House of Representatives representing Meha Mubi North, Mubi South Federal Constituency. He's alleging that she engaged in trading uh, justice for favors and that the elevation uh, could be a compensation for her actions. Well, joining me in the studio now is uh, Senator Elisha Abu, who until recently, uh, when he got removed, represented Adama North Senatorial District. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the program. All, all right, talk to us about uh, the issues that you have been raising. And of course, uh, you want the uh, president to intervene. And how about the National Judicial Council? It, shouldn't it have started from there that uh, this is where you would want uh, the action to be taken, though you had written the letter to the NGC? Why exactly uh, did you have to write the president again? Well, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I delayed, I delayed uh, deliberately waited until now to write both Mr. President and the NGC. The reason why I waited till this very moment is to ensure that similar cases is dispensed with in the Supreme Court. Because by the Electoral Act, which was passed by the Eighth Senate of the Eighth National Assembly, National Assembly and House of Assembly election matters terminate at the, co the Court of Appeal. Yeah. So I waited for similar cases to be dispensed with in the Supreme Court, even though I knew that what I got in the Court of Appeal was not justice. But I waited until to see what will happen. And I have written to the NJC to investigate this matter. And I have written to Mr. President because Mr. President is the one who act on the nomination which has been sent to the Mr. President by the CGN as recommended by uh, a Judicial Service Commission. Commission yeah. So the Judicial Service Commission, which the uh, CGN is, 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 is the chairman, submitted him to the President. So what happened was that while we were on our holidays on 23rd December, the National Assembly, the Senate, just did a 25 minutes screening and passed them while Nigerians were on holiday. But it is not too late. Yeah, but why didn't you file a petition against her during the screening there at the National Assembly? The, I mean, your colleagues are there. The, uh, it should have started from that point because people are saying that it looks like you're late to the party. No, I'm not late to the party. We have, we have had people that we are screened at the National Assembly, but they were screened, they were passed, but they were not sworn in. For example, we screen a lady uh, to head uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this agency in, uh, uh, what do you call it, humanitarian ministry. She was screened, passed, but she was not sworn in. I'm not letting the party. The matter was rushed in. By, pro by, by, by precedence, what happened was that after Mr. President read to the National Assembly, the Senate President do give it to the committee chairman yeah, the and committee the committee members, judiciary. committee on judiciary, will now sit down together 
and look at these things. But in this case, the Senate president did not do that. He just went to the chamber and said, well, Supreme Court nominees are, are, are waiting outside. Let them come in. And senators said, you can't bring them in here. They, they, by, by precedence, they should go to the, by our laws, they should go down and be screened by the committee. There and then, the Senate president shouted, Mongonu, Mongonu, who is Senator Mongonu, where are you? Okay, go and talk to them outside. Please, we are waiting. 25 minutes talking to them, and he said, pass them. That is an abuse of legislative process. And these are, these are your former colleagues. They are my so if, if you had issues, uh, I mean, these grievances that you're laying against mm -hmm. her, I'm more interested in what you have said, that she was dispensing uh, mm -hmm. justice, uh, trading justice for favors. Yes. Isn't that a very grave allegation? Uh, it is a very grave... As a former federal lawmaker, you know what that means. Uh, it is a very, very grave allegation, and she know I'm saying the truth. She know what, what she did. What exactly did you mean by that? Well... I will keep one routines, wrap up for now until the day I appear because I sent a petition to the NGC and NGC must call me. It's the federal government job they are doing. Well, that now, is if now, they find your allegations to, uh, worthy if, uh, of even you if being I, called upon. Even if it's not worthy, they will call me to come answer my allegation because I made an, an allegation against a Supreme Court nominee. So, and I sent a petition. I sent evidences and the record of proceedings from the tribunal court coming to the Supreme Court to the Court of Appeal is there with them. They will study it and match with my own allegation against her. So they have to call me to come and say, okay, shed light into all of this. But I kept some, tr some Trump cards until when I appear before them and then I will tell them. They, she know what she did. They know this, the, the Court of Appeal staff, a civil, a civil servant who acted as a go-between between people from Adama who brought money to Abuja and negotiated it. Now let's go into the merit of the matter itself. Yeah, I mean, you, you talked about similar cases too that the Supreme Court mm. handled, yes. which is similar to yours, and which is it's based on that premise that you were writing to now, uh, both the NGC and the president. Yes, sir. Uh, so now this is the petition, about sir. It. Yes. This is the petition. This is the petition and came originally received. I just, I just removed them from the way it was clipped from the court. I just yeah. took them. So this is the petition. The petition, two grounds. Ground one was that my election should be voided because uh, non-compliance with electoral act and corrupt practices. That is ground one. Yeah. Ground two, non-nominated or not elected with valid vote cast. My lawyer now sent on preliminary objection, which is technical. And he said, by law and by precedence, by rulings in the Supreme Court, which include three elections in reverse, you cannot lump up corrupt practices, and which is a criminal offense, yeah. and uh, non-compliance with the Electoral Act, which is a civil matter, and lump them together in the same ground. This is the rule of the Supreme Court, because the burden of proof it's not the same. So you have to throw away this case. The lawyer to the petitioner stood up in the court and said, based on this, we made a mistake. I All am right, therefore that's... withdrawing that ground one. Okay, the first ground was withdrawn. The first withdrawn. ground was okay. withdrawn. Okay, okay. Curiously, Justice Chioma used that same ground one, restored it in the Court of Appeal, after it was withdrawn by the lawyer itself, he did not ask for it to be, to be restated though. She reinstated it at the court of appeal and used it to base her judgment. And this is contained in the court's proceedings. Page 553 of the record of proceedings. I'm not illiterate. Page 553 captured in the record of proceedings and he said I am withdrawing it and it's there before her. Well, and she, <laughs> and, it's and, a very she, strong allegation, actually. And, 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 and she now reinstated it, but without him asking. That is number one. Number two, 253 pulling units, all where I won, was cancelled. Very and quickly, I as came, we try to round off the conversation. And I came with some of the EC8 results sheet here. I came with the EC8, some, of the, some of them here. Mr. Sambo, this election was cancelled. This election was cancelled. All right. The reason why that election was cancelled was because the person here, uh, 
here he wanted to write in, in Figo, but he wrote in Word. So he now cancelled that Word and he wrote in Figo. She said yeah. they cancelled this result. And in this result, I, w I got one is two here and the person got 68. This result was cancelled. Oh, now, yeah. this, this, this election result, here I got 75 here. Do you know why this, she cancelled this election? Was because political party that did not participate in the election, they left the space vacant. They didn't write zero for them. Yeah, I mean, it's very so, visible there. So she said, why didn't you write zero for them? So they canceled election because they didn't write zero for a political party that did not participate. Uh, uh, now, all right, Senator, very quickly because we are running out and, of time. And, and, and a lot, a lot, a lot of users, the, the whole of my word was canceled. Mm. Now she is writing electoral act and any guidelines by that her judgment. Okay, that's your allegation, actually. It's not an allegation. Mm. It's a fact. It's, it's in her judgment. Three. 188 pulling units out of the 253 where she alleged cancellation. There was no cancellation. No cancellation. Is, the, is it the judge that actually alleged the cancellation or you're saying that those who brought the case against you? They, no, the people who brought the case against me, they say cancellation, cancellation. No. Two out of the 253 pulling units that was asked that they should cancel it, eight of them they did not send in one paper, yet they say there's cancellation. Bring the paper, ECFA, no paper, still cancelled. All, all right, now I just want, uh, because I don't have enough time now, I just mm. want to hear what exactly you want President Tinubu to do, or even the NGC in this instance. Because, I mean, you can't be reinstated based on no, 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 what no, no, the no, law no, no. says. No, no, no. All those appeals end no. at the Court of Appeals, yes. and there's a judgment against you. Uh, so yes. what exactly... Uh, has made you to come out against this uh, Supreme Court nominee. I do uh, not justice. want. I do. I am not asking for review of my case. So what exactly I am, do you I, want? I am. I, I believe in the law. We made that law. I was a senator for five years. We made the law that cases of National Assembly end in the Court of Appeal. I'm yeah. not asking for review okay. because when because it goes against me, I I I, I now ask for law to be banned. No. What I want is I want to end judicial banditry. What do you mean by that? Judicial coup d'etat. Military uses instrumentality of their office to commit coup against democracy. Judiciary are now using the same instrumentality of their office for coup against democracy. Well, As can I you say today, that the action of one person actually means that the entire institution is bad? You know, they cried all over, it's all over, it's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, Look because at all, he has I, just uh, one person that has... Plateau uh, State. What will happen to, to, to the two centers in Plateau State? The 16 members of the House of Assembly, the five members of the House of Representatives, who will pay for that crime against democracy? All right. I mean, this what will happen to Senator words. Darlington? Senator Darlington was removed illegally against all known law in the country. The Supreme Court have settled... That internal uh, the party matter should not go out. Now, Senator Dalentin was removed. Who will pay? Who right. will pay for my own case? This, this are we, very I strong am calling, words. yes, sir. I am calling for reform. It's not for me, uh, it's right. for you, sir, for your children, uh, for me. All right, exactly in 30 seconds. What do you want President Tinubu to do in this matter? Because judicial discipline rests in the NGC and, of course, uh, the CJN. Mr. President, she'll stop her swearing in till she finished answering these charges at the NGC. All right. We must thank you so much, uh, Senator Elisha Abu, who used to represent uh, Adama North. And then, of course, uh, he had issues. And, uh, of course, uh, he had to be uh, removed. And he's uh, saying that the actions were not properly done. And, of course, his accusations is, uh, uh, are all against one particular individual. Three uh, of justice. Them actually. Oh, three of them. Yes, one, the to the NGC, one to the NGC, uh, one letter to the NGC, and, and one to Mr. President. Uh, all right. I'm saying that the persons who you're accusing actually is just one person. Yes, while, to, them, to Mr. But President. You, but you wrote three petitions. Actually. Yes, two petitions. Okay. The, one, the one I sent to the NGC uh, uh, right. against the three. We one must, to the President against one. We must thank you so much, uh, Senator, for helping us to clarify all the issues. And uh, we only hope that the authorities will actually uh, take charge of what's going on and the 
disciplinary issues will be taken up exactly the way the law specifies. And of course, that power actually lies with the NJC. Well, that's how it's been on this edition of This Week. Uh, thanks so much to our production team here in Abuja, Lagos and London. Do join us same time next week for another exciting edition. I'm Samu Samu.